Today, I'm going to teach you a poem and tell the cricket. I'm sure you all have seen and and a cricket also. Let me tell you before I begin today's lesson that ants are very, very hardworking, highly industrious creatures. Now, this poem, see, the ant and the cricket. Now, it is a fable. Now, what is a fable? You must be wondering. Let me tell you. A fable is a story that has a moral in it. That is, it teaches us some good lessons. Lessons which we can implement in our lives. A fable is a story often with animals as characters. So, who are the characters in a fable? Animals, of course. Birds and animals. That convey a moral. That is, fables teach us a lesson. Some good lesson. We learn something from it. That is a moral. This poem about an ant and a cricket contains an idea of far-reaching significance. This poem is also a fable and it teaches us some very good lessons. Which is as true of a four-legged cricket as of a two-legged one. The cricket has got four legs. Then what about two-legged one? Actually, Two-legged here means human beings. Human beings have got two legs. Surely you have seen a cricket that has two legs. Now, let us see. Let us read the poem. Cricket actually has got four legs. We humans have got two legs. Now, oh, what is the comparison here? See? Ants are very hardworking, whereas cricket is very lazy. But sometimes human beings, the two-legged creatures, are sometimes as lazy as the cricket. So they have to suffer in life as the cricket. The cricket had no food to eat. It was a severe problem. Okay, now let's read further. A silly young cricket accustomed to sing through the warm sunny months of gay summer and spring. And there was a cricket. The cricket was very foolish. What did it do? The only thing that it did was it was so happy because it was summer and all that it did was sing sing and only sing. That is, it enjoyed the summer months thoroughly. There was no body to stop the cricket from singing. Began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty and winter was come. Once again, I repeat it. A silly young cricket accustomed to sing. See, a foolish cricket was accustomed to sing. He was used to sing. Accustomed to means used to. So, the cricket was used to singing. When in the summer months, he was so happy, so full of joy, that all that he did was it went on singing, singing and only singing. But, one day it began to complain. Began to complain when he found that at home his cupboard was empty. One day when the winter approached, what did he find? He found that his cupboard was totally empty. There was no food at all in his cupboard. Oh, he was very much worried. He was worried that he would starve to death. His cupboard was empty and winter was come. Why is it empty? It is winter now. And why there is no food in winter? Because 
the ground is covered with snow. The snow all around. The trees have no leaves, no flowers, no fruit. That is, there is nothing to eat. It is very much worried. What is he going to? What is he going to eat in winter? Not a crumb to be found. Nothing is there in his cupboard. A single piece of food, no crumb. On the snow-covered ground. See, the ground is covered with snow. There is no food. Even if he tries to look for food, search is not going to get any food. Why? Because the ground is covered with snow. All that is visible, all that is there is only snow, snow and only snow. Nothing to eat. Not a flower could he see. He could not see a single flower also. The trees are bare, no leaves, no flower, no fruits. See, it always happens when winter comes, nature looks bare. There is no flower, no fruit, no leaves on the trees. Same is the condition here. And here it is very severely cold. So cold that the ground is full of snow. That is why it is so cold. Oh, what will become, says the cricket of me. The cricket is worried, confused. Now he is thinking what is going to happen to him. Perhaps he is going to die without food. It, at last my starvation and famine made bold. So his problem is further increased, aggravated by famine, by starvation. There is no food anywhere to be found. So perhaps he is going to starve to death. Is he going to starve? Die without food. Now, all dripping with wet. Why is everything dripping with wet? Why is it dripping? Why is water dripping? Because from his body, because he is wet. He is feeling cold. He has got wet in the rain. It is raining outside and he is wet. That is why he is dripping. And all trembling with cold. Obviously, the same thing happens when we get wet in the rain. What happens? We start shivering, we start feeling so cold. Here also the cricket because it has got wet in the rains, it's shivering, trembling. Away we set off to a miserly and So what does the cricket do? Now he decides to go to a miserly ant. Why is the ant called miserly? Because the ant is not willing to share anything with anyone. And ants never share, they never met, they never borrow. To see if to keep him alive, he would grant him shelter from rain. So now he decided to go to an ant and ask for some shelter and food also. Let's see what happens. And a mouthful of bread he asks for. He has a plan to ask for some food also. If he wished only to borrow, he would repay it tomorrow. So, what does he plan to do? He plans to approach an ant, ask the ant for some shelter and food, and that he would return it when he would have sufficient food in his own cupboard. That is, when it would be summer once again. If not, he must die of starvation and sorrow. If he doesn't get food, he doesn't get shelter, what is going to happen to him? Perhaps he would die of starvation when one doesn't get any food to eat. One is likely to die. One is likely to starve to death. See the ant to the cricket, are your servant and friend. So, what does the ant tell the cricket? The ant says that I am ready to help you. Okay, I am a friend also, servant also. That is, I am ready to help you. I know what you are. But we ants never borrow, we ants never lend. The only problem is that ants do not lend. Ants do not walk. Why? 
because they plan their future so well that they do not face any problem in winter months but tell me dear cricket did you learn nothing by when the weather was warm the ant asked the cricket did you not save any food for winter months no why because the cricket was not bothered to save food to store food in his cupboard what what was he busy doing he was busy enjoying singing and dancing enjoying the summer months that is all that he did so he forgot to save food for the winter months when the weather was warm you did not save any food coat the cricket that is what the cricket tells what is he say not i my heart was so light that i sang there like says not i no i did not save any food cricket tells that no i did not save any food why because i was so busy enjoying the summer months only singing singing and singing i was engrossed in singing so i did not save any food for the winter months that is what the cricket tells the ant for all nature looked gay you sang sir you said so the ant tells the cricket perhaps because the nature looks so beautiful so you were busy singing and perhaps you forgot to save food for the winter months go then says the ant and turns the winter away so the ant tells the cricket you do the same thing in winter also the ant tells the cricket why don't you go and dance now also as you did in the summer months why don't you enjoy now in the same manner as you had enjoyed in the summer months thus ending he hastily lifted the cricket and out of the door turned the poor little cricket so what does the ant do to the cricket he opens the door and tells the cricket no you better go from here i can't afford to give you any shelter any food so you have to leave immediately that is what the ant tells the cricket folks call this a fable i warrant it to see some people call this poem a fable why because it teaches us a lesson i warrant it to some cricket have more less and some have two now the poet here says that some cricket have two legs and some have four actually the insect cricket has four legs then why does the poet mention about two legs what is that two legs cricket does it have two legs no actually he means the human beings through this particular sentence or sentences he wants to convey to the readers that human beings are sometimes lazy like the cricket so they sometimes fall into trouble they forget to save for their future but it is not so with the ants ants are very clever very industrious very hard working so they do not face any problem in life at all they lead a very very well planned life where they do not face any problems but not so with the human beings human beings are sometimes lazy like the cricket and they forget they are engrossed in their own busy life and they forget they are so busy enjoying wasting money that sometimes they even forget to save for their future then what happens they are in deep deep trouble and their condition becomes the same like the cricket you know they are close some they refuse any and every sort of help 
So, we learn so many things from this poem, the ant and the cricket. What do we learn? That we must work very hard. We must be industrious like the ants. See, they work so hard. They are absolutely independent. They lead an independent life. They don't rely on anyone for any sort of help. And they save for their future. So, they do not suffer in life. They are always happy. They need a well planned life. So, we humans must also learn from these tiny creatures. That is ants. What? We must work very hard. Then there will be no suffering. We should we will not bother. We should not bother for our future if we have enough savings. And we must work very hard for one more reason why only then we can achieve success in life. So please go through this poem. Underline the difficult words. Write down the meanings in your notebook and write down a story, a fable and the lesson that you learn from that fable and also this poem. That's all for this session.